I know this is kind of unusual for this channel, but can we talk about headphones? Let's talk about headphones. Hey guys, I'm Eric, and for the past several years, I've been using the Sony 1000 XM3s, this pair right here. And these are a fantastic pair of headphones that I used when I used to go in the office pre-pandemic, and I've continued to use them uh, working remote for the past couple years, and I want to get into that a little bit, but recently the left ear cup started to go out on me. They're kind of like crackling and fizzling, probably because I put them on too many times coming out of the shower. And so I seen that the XM5s recently came out, so I decided to give those a try. So I just want to talk a little bit about noise canceling headphones and the Sony 1000X series of headphones in general. I've been fortunate enough to use the XM3s. Uh, my girlfriend has the XM4s and now I have the XM5. So I thought we could do a bit of a comparison and talk a little bit about noise canceling headphones in general and why I think that they are a great tool for creatives and artists to invest in. Back in the old world, pre-COVID, when I used to go into the office, I worked in a pit that had a lot of artists crammed together and it was noise and commotion, always something going on pretty much at all times of the day. And so I picked myself up the XM3s and they were amazing. They like totally made work more bearable. I was able to focus because prior to the XM3s, I was using the ATH M50s by Audio-Technica, which are a great pair of headphones, but they don't have any noise canceling or anything like that. They're just kind of closed ear without any noise canceling. And they're, they're good headphones, but having the noise canceling really kind of muffled everything and kind of gave me like a warm blanket around my ears to help me focus. When we moved to working remote, I was surprised that I found myself continuing to use noise canceling, even while I'm here working home alone in a quiet office. Because of that coziness and that blanket feeling that I get, like it kind of closes me in and lets me focus. And I really like that about noise canceling headphones. So I was kind of sad when these started to go out, but then I seen that the XM5s came out, so I decided to give them a try. So let's dive into the differences a little bit and talk a bit about them. So as you can see here, we have the past three generations of Sony WX-1000 series headphones, the XM3s, the XM4s, and the XM5s. The weight between these three is pretty much the same. The XM3s are 255 grams, the XM4s are 254 grams, and the XM5s are 249 grams. For comparison, the AirPods Max are 386 grams, which I think is ridiculously heavy. I know some people like that, but for me, I'd rather have a headphone that's quite light on my ears and I can kind of forget about it, especially a headphone that I'm gonna be wearing all day. Like these, I like to wear during my workday completely. I even choose these over the pair of Sunderas that I have, which are a pair of open back uh, magnetic planar headphones that are absolutely excellent, but I use those for listening to music and for doing sound editing and working on these videos because they do get kind of uncomfortable after all day wear. I, I like that these are so light and they're so easy to put on. And obviously it's nice not having a cord because I can get up and move around and stretch or grab a drink and keep my headphones on. And I find that to be hugely valuable. The battery life on the XM3s and the XM4s was already fantastic at around 30 hours. Just a note about the XM3s battery. I would say after the three and a half or so years that I've had them now, maybe a little longer, the battery's probably degraded by about half to 60, 65%, but they still get through almost two full days without a charge. And I suspect the XM5s last even longer because one feature that the XM5s have that the previous generations did not is the auto pausing when you remove your headphones. Now the XM4s do sort of have that. And you'll see here, there's actually a little sensor in the XM4s that are the proximity sensor, which the XM3s did not have. So that was a feature that I missed out on on my generation. The noise canceling in the XM3s was already excellent. And then they improved that a little bit with the XM4s. And these XM5s have even a more noticeable noise canceling than the previous generations. I think they have even more microphones than before. The XM4s had five. I wanna say these have eight microphones. Now, the funny thing is, even though when you compare the noise canceling side by side on these and these, I didn't have any complaints about the quality of noise canceling on the previous generation of the WX-1000s. It is excellent and it did everything I wanted to do in a noisy pit or working from home or pretty much doing anything. While these are better and have even stronger noise canceling, I don't think you're missing out 
on anything by going with the XM4s. So let's talk a little bit about the similarities and differences between these two headphones. The XM3s and the XM4s basically shared an identical design except for that proximity sensor on the inside. The leather was super uh, plush and you had a lot of padding. You can see the band is fairly thick on these. And the ear cups mostly sat over your ears. I would say they sit a little bit more on top of your ears compared to the XM5s, which feel like they engulf my ears a little bit more. But you still had the same, you have the same settings, the input for uh, old school aux, if you want to roll that way. The one big benefit of the XM4s is that you've probably heard a lot of people talk about is that they can close. And this gives a smaller form factor to the cases. And you can see here that the XM5 carrying case is a bit larger than the XM4s. I think it's overblown a little bit. I mean, when you look at them side by side, it's slightly larger, but I don't think it's like, a make or break and fit it in your bag, but overall it is bigger. And that is kind of a downside of these headphones that they don't fold up. I think there was something really cool about that kind of snug, compact form factor. And that case being oval felt like I could kind of toss it around and be a little rougher with it. Whereas this feels very delicate and I, I even feel like the outside material is less padded and protected than the previous generation case. And so I think that's definitely a downside on the new XM5s. Now you can see on the XM5s, the headband is quite a bit more narrow. However, there is a lot of padding on these and overall I feel like the padding's a bit softer. I don't think it's real leather. It feels definitely like synthetic or vegan leather, uh, but it's still very nice and very plush. Um, like I mentioned, they kind of sit over your ears a little bit more. And when I first put these on, I did feel like they were a little tight on my head. Um, probably because they were just a new pair of headphones, whereas these are kind of broken in and these are like a, a familiar friend where these are like a new stranger that I have to get used to. But after a couple days of wearing them, I definitely got used to them and I don't have any complaints. I'm able to wear them the entire workday without issue. And like I mentioned, I choose to wear the Sony noise canceling headphones over more audiophile headphones because like I said, my Sunderas, they get uncomfortable after a few hours. I can't see myself wearing those for eight hours. And that's why I chose to go with the XM5s over getting the AirPods Max. Well, the AirPods Max do have better audio quality and arguably might have slightly better noise canceling. I don't see myself being able to wear those for all day without feeling a little bit fatigued. And like I mentioned, the noise canceling on the previous generation was already excellent. So I don't think you're missing anything by not having the AirPods Max, even if they do have slightly better noise canceling. Like this is th these products are already so good as it is that I don't really think it matters. The sound quality, I would say, is slightly improved, but overall you can still tell they're a pair of Sony wireless headphones. I wouldn't call the audio audiophile grade. Like if you really care about audio, you probably should go for a pair of wired headphones that you can plug into a DAC and get the quality that you want. One of the benefits is they do have a equalizer in the app. You do have to pair them to your phone to be able to use the equalizer. And that does make a difference when you're playing through like hip hop or rock or like ambient music or like focus sounds or something like that. That equalizer can make a big difference in the response and how different songs sound. So I definitely recommend playing with that. But that equalizer is available on the XM3s and the XM4. So you're not missing that by going with an earlier generation. So let's talk about price. The XM4s come in at $400 where the AirPods Max come in at 500. You can find the AirPods Max at like 450 sometimes. The XM4s were going for 350, which I think was already a great value for a pair of high-end noise canceling headphones. But at the time of this recording, they're actually going for 280, which puts them at the same price range as the Bose QuietComfort 45s. And so I think there is a real bargain to be had with the XM4s. And the truth is there's nothing in the XM5s that I feel like I would be missing by going with the XM4s instead. This is an excellent pair of headphones and anyone who gets them, especially at that price point, I think will be very happy with them, especially if you're looking for a pair of noise canceling headphones. And I'll put links in the description so you can check out both of these, the XM4s and the XM5s. Obviously the XM5s do have a refreshed design, so if the aesthetics are important to you, you might wanna go with that. The marginally better noise canceling is great. Yeah, overall, I still think the XM4s are such an excellent value. And I'm sure it won't be long where we're seeing the XM5s go for like 350 or something as we get later in the year, so. 
maybe hold off for a little bit and see if the price comes down and you might get a deal on them. I'm guessing they're trying to clear out stock of the XM4. So if you do want them at that 280 price point, you probably want to try to get them sooner rather than later because they might sell out. Uh, but who knows, you can even still find XM3s around here or there. So maybe some retailers will still have them lingering in the back. So all in all, I don't necessarily regret my decision on the XM5s, but I just think that there's nothing that you're losing by going with the XM4s. So definitely something to consider. And I haven't used the QuietComfort 45s, but I've also heard the noise canceling and quality of those are excellent. So if you're more of a Bose person, maybe that price point is the way to go for you on those. But I really like the Sonys. One other thing worth mentioning is with the XM3s, I'm only able to pair to one device at a time. Whereas on the XM4s, it added multi-device pairing, which is pretty awesome, honestly, like being able to connect to both your phone and your computer through your headphones is really nice. And the XM5s also have that support. I have found some issues where it does prioritize your phone audio over your computer audio. So I have been in Zoom meetings where I thought the person's audio died, but then I just realized I had my phone open and it was disabling my computer sound. And then as soon as I close my phone, their audio comes back. So kind of embarrassing. The other thing I did want to mention about the XM5s was that, which is a minor positive, is I noticed all of the voice controls and inputs on the headphones are a lot faster. They're a lot faster to turn on, a lot faster to turn off. Um, it's just a little bit more responsive. Whereas switching between modes and whatnot on the XM4s and XM3s is a little slower. It's not a huge deal, but something I wanted to point out. I also wanted to give you a quick audio test of the mic quality on both of these. So we're just gonna do the mic quality on both the XM3s and then the XM5s. I don't have the XM4s in front of me right now. This is a mic quality test of the Sony WH-1000 XM5s, just so you can kind of hear my voice and how they compare to the. This is a mic quality test of the Sony WH-1000 XM3s. I don't have the XM4s in front of me to test, but we at least can compare between the XM3s to the XM5s to see if they have significantly improved the mic quality of the XM5s. So I think that's gonna wrap this review up. I know it's a little different for this channel. Obviously we mostly go over tutorials for ZBrush and 3D in general, but I felt like headphones and noise canceling headphones can be a really effective part of an artist's toolkit in terms of focusing and help kind of getting yourself in the zone to work on art and get in that flow state. And I do want to do more gear reviews in the future. We might look at some different tablets and stuff like that, review Cintiqs and uh, pen tablets. We'll see going forward. You know, I'm kind of just going with what I'm interested in. But yeah, uh, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Again, I'll put the links for these headphones in the description below if you want to check them out. Those are affiliate links, so I do get a little kickback. I appreciate that. Have a great week. Don't stop creating, and I'll see you next time. Take care.